We are at a theme park to solve your medical mysteries. Zand is preparing the clinic ready for his first patient. And Chris is ouch and about in the park to answer your burning questions. Wow, I'm impressed. At the clinic, Zand is open for business. Next patient, please. First in is nine-year-old Poppy with an interesting ailment. So, Poppy, what have you come to see us for? I got some strange red spots on my face and my arms. What's the diagnosis, Doc? Sounds like a case of I've got some strange red spots on my face and my arms itis. Spot on. Now let's have a look at them. I've got the ouch cam here, and I can see it right there on your face. Do you think it looks like a spider? A little bit. Well, in fact, it's called a spider nevus because some people say it looks a little bit like a spider. It's got little blood vessels coming out of it so you can kind of see spider's legs. So, the blood vessels that are supplying blood to your skin, one of them's got a bit big and it's bringing more blood than it should to the skin. And so all the tiny blood vessels in your skin, called capillaries, have got a bit bigger and so they're a bit more red. So you said you had some other red spots. Can you show me those? Oh, OK, so you've got two on your arm right there. I've got two almost in exactly the same place. Now, those are actually a different kind of red spot called a Campbell de Morgan spot. They're also completely normal. Almost everyone has got some of those. How can I get rid of them? The one on your face, sometimes when you just get older, they go away. If it doesn't go away, there are two things you can do. One is you can get a doctor to stick a needle in it, and that'll make it bleed a little bit, and then it'll go away, and it doesn't hurt very much at all. And the other way of getting rid of them is with a laser. But for you, it's completely normal. They're completely common. And I'll tell you one famous person who's got one, Dr Chris. Poppy, thank you very much for coming to the Ouchmobile today. Thank you, Dr Sand. Away from the clinic, Chris is ouch and about in the park. Archer, what's your question? How do you get a wobbly tooth? Do you know that below all your baby teeth, you've got grown-up teeth already in your jaw, and they're growing through. And as they grow through, they push the baby teeth out, and that's why it gets wobbly. A really good question. Thank you, Archer. Thanks, Dr Chris. Back at the Ouchmobile are siblings 8-year-old Charlotte and 11-year-old James. So, Charlotte, James, why have you come to the Ouchmobile? When I stand up, I have a gap in between my knees and I can't put them together. But I can. What's the diagnosis, Doc? Oh, sounds to me like it's a case of I've got a gap between my knees when I stand up and I can't put them together, but I can itis. Easy for you to say. Well, let's find out more about this. Now, Charlotte, can you open the lid on the ouch cam? Now, stand up and show me your knees. Oh, wow. Your feet are close together. Mm -hmm. But as we move up, your knees are wide apart. Now, that is completely different to your brother whose knees are touching. How does this happen? The answer, really, is that we don't know. I can tell you what's happened is that your bones have grown slightly differently, so we call that a varus change in your knees. What you've really got is normal knees that are a bit, bit further apart than some other people's knees, and other people have got knees that knock together a little bit more. The way that your bones grow is controlled in quite a complicated way. And so you can just get a variation where, for some people, it grows slightly differently. So your brother's grown with his knees close together and you've grown differently. Now, you're still growing and your leg bones are still growing. So possibly, as Charlotte gets older, the gap between your knees will shrink. Does that make sense? Yeah. Charlotte, James, thank you very much for bringing your amazing knees to the Ouchmobile. Thank, thank you, you, Dr. Dr. Zahn. Job done for today. Clinic closed. Ouch. We're both ouch and about. I'm hitting the wards with my ouch bleeper. Have you got a question for me? Wow. And I'm hitting the streets to answer your medical mysteries. In the hospital canteen, Zand is busily spinning plates. That's your bleeper. Get on with answering some questions. This one's from Molly, who has an infection. Hi, Molly, how are you? Hi, Dr Zand. Have you got a question for me? Yeah, well, how does your body produce insulin? What's the diagnosis, Doc? Sounds to me like a case of, I'm Molly and I want to know how my body produces insulin-itis. <laughs> Excellent question. OK, the pancreas is the organ that produces insulin. And insulin is a hormone that allows your cells to take in sugar and store it or use it. So when you have a meal, you eat sugar, 
your insulin levels go up and that means that you can absorb the sugar. Now, why are you interested in insulin? Because I've got type 1 diabetes. And for you, how does your body produce insulin? It doesn't. How do you get your insulin? Uh, by a pen, insulin pen. If you don't take it, what happens to your blood sugar? It, like, goes really, really it high. It goes really high. Molly, have I answered your question? Yes. Well, you have earned an Operation Ouch sticker. Thank you. Right, thanks very much. Bye. Bye. Meanwhile, I'm out on the street. Get your quirky queries solved here. Dr Chris, can oh, I hello. ask you a question, please? Of course you can. Why do you faint? Why do we faint? Right, that is an awesome question. Have you ever fainted? Yes, I have. I did faint when I was in the car. I kept vomiting and then I just fainted. So, when you vomit, you lose a lot of fluid from your body and that means you have a bit less blood volume and so your heart finds it harder to get blood to your brain. That's what causes you to faint. But there's another thing. When you vomit, the nerves from your stomach can actually send a signal to your heart and slow it right down, and that can make you faint too. But you're not going to vomit on me? No. You promise? Promise. Don't vomit on me. You can vomit on Dr Zahn. Oi, Chris! And give me five, please. So cheeky. Back in hospital, I've got another call. It's from Brogan Jean, who's having physiotherapy. Hello, Brogan Jean. How are you? Oh, hi. Now, have you got a question for me? What's hypermobility? What's the diagnosis, Doc? Sounds like a case of, I want to know what hypermobility is, itis. I'm hyped up for this one. So hypermobility just means the joint is more mobile. It is caused by differences in collagen. And collagen is the stuff that makes up ligaments, and ligaments are what hold your bones to each other. And if you have very flexible collagen, it means your muscles can get more easily damaged and torn, and it means your joints can also get more easily stretched and torn and be less stable. Now, I'm guessing that you've got hypermobility, is that right? Yeah, I can bend my joint. I can't get my thumb anywhere near my wrist. And then I can do that. Wow! All the things that you're doing, I can't do them. So if I was in a dance where I had to be very flexible, do any high kicks or anything like that, I can do any of that. Yeah, I can. So you can. I do street dance, I do pop-ups. Can you show me what a pop-up is? Uh-oh, dancing dad alert. <laughs> I'm not even doing it in time. Cut. Let's leave it there, shall we? Here is an Operation Out sticker for you. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye. Job done for today. Clinic closed. Now we're getting out and about with our mobile clinic. Today, we're at a theme park to help solve your medical mysteries. If you're anxious about an ailment or curious about a condition, then the Ouchmobile is the place for you. That is incredible. Chris is preparing the clinic ready for his first patient. And Zahn is out in the park to answer your burning questions. At the clinic, Chris is open for business. Next patient, please. First in is nine-year-old Shoma with a question about some frightful findings on his feet. I've got a bunch of verrucas on my foot that won't go away. Well, what have you got to say about this, Chris? This sounds like a rare case of I've got a bunch of verrucas on my foot and they won't go away, itis. And breathe. Now let's have a look. Yeah, one... Two, three. A little cluster of them here. Now that's the big daddy Veruca there. And more up here. That's an impressive nine Verucas on one foot. How do you get Verucas? So Verucas are viruses, so you get them from walking around where other people with Verucas have walked. So the virus has got quite a cool name. Do you know what it is? Yeah. It's called a human papilloma virus. Can you say that? A human papilloma virus. Nice one, Shoma. The virus causes your skin to grow in an uncontrollable way, leading to these lumps. But the good news is they often go away on their own. The important thing if you have a Veruca is to not spread it too much to other people. So when you go swimming, you've got to wear a Veruca sock. When you play PE, you've got to keep your shoes on. And don't worry if you have Verucas, they'll probably soon disappear by themselves. Away from the clinic, Zand is out and about in the park. And let's see if there are any medical mysteries or maybe people have got some questions for me. Why does your heart beat fast on roller coasters? When you're frightened, your body releases a hormone called adrenaline and that makes your heart beat faster because your body thinks it might have to run away. 
If a tiger attacked you, you get a load of adrenaline, and then your heart beat faster, and you'd be able to run away faster. That's what your body's doing, it's preparing to run away, even though you're strapped into a roller coaster. Look what I did today. Oh, no, that's terrible. What happened? Well, I was going on the ride, and I hit my leg on the side of the ride. Oh, was it painful? Yeah. So what happens when you get a bruise is you break the blood vessels under your skin. You've actually, what you're seeing there is bleeding under the skin. So all that stuff that looks black is actually red blood, and it will gradually change colour as it heals. Back at the Ouchmobile, there's a new case in the waiting room. Hi, Dr Chris. It's 10-year-old Mohammed, and he's got something incredible to show us. Mohammed, why have you come to the Ouchmobile today? I can fold my ear and stick it in this hole here. You fold your ear in what? Diagnose this, Chris. So this sounds like a very rare case of I can fold my ear up and stick it in this hole here, itis. I can't wait to see it. Wow! That is the most bendy ear I've ever seen. OK, Mohammed, well, give, give it a little wiggle and make it pop out. <laughs> well, let's see that again. How come I can do that with my ear? Well, inside your ear, you've got some very bendy stuff called cartilage, and it's the same stuff that's in your nose. So I don't think there's anything wrong with your cartilage. It's just nice and soft and you've got bendy ears. Job done for today. Clinic closed. Now we're getting ouch and about with our mobile clinic. Today, we're at a theme park to help you solve your medical mysteries. If you're anxious about an ailment... ..or curious about a condition... ..then the Ouchmobile is the place for you. That's brilliant. Look at that. Zand is preparing the clinic ready for his patients. And later, he'll be out in the park to answer your burning questions. At the clinic, he's open for business. Can I have the next patient? First in is eight-year-old Zoe, with a question about some bendy bits on her body. So, Zoe, why have you come to the Ouchmobile? So I've got a really bendy body. What's the diagnosis, Doc? This sounds like a case of I've got a really bendy body-itis. That's what I'd say. Can I have a look at what you can do? I can to bend my arm all the way around. Oh, well, I think I can do that. Oh, wait a minute. You're doing a thumbs up while I'm doing a thumbs down? <laughs> wow, that's amazing. What else can you do? Touch my elbows behind my back. OK, I can at least do this one. Are they touching? Are they no. close? No. Oh. Why do I bend so much and my friends don't? What you've got is a thing called hypermobility. Most of the time, your joints are held in place by things called ligaments, and they're like very tough elastic bands that keep the bones together. Now, those ligaments are mostly made of something called collagen, and in most people, the collagen is quite tough, but for you, it's a bit more flexible, it's a bit stretchier, and that means that your joints can move a little bit more. It doesn't do you any harm, though, but it does mean that you're a bit more bendy than other people. It's a busy day for Zand. He's leaving the clinic to go ouch and about in the park to solve your medical mysteries. Why do you get heat rash when it's hot? Ordinarily, what you're trying to do when you're hot is send all the blood to the surface of your skin, and then as your sweat evaporates, it cools that blood down. You get colder. But when you get a heat rash, all the blood going to your skin irritates it, and it gets itchy, and it gets red. So what you really need to do is cool down some other way, like cold water or a cold T-shirt, or just get in the shade. Why do you shiver after you've been on a wet ride? Shivering? is your body's attempt to warm up, because you get all your muscles working. It's very hard work shivering. And it's a bit like going for a run without having to go for the run. You get all your muscles shaking, that generates heat and you feel a bit warmer. The best thing to do is dry off, though. Back at the Ouchmobile, there's a new case in the waiting room. Come on, the next patient. It's nine-year-old Beth with a nuisance on her knee. So, Beth, what's brought you to the Ouchmobile today? I've got two things going on on my knee. What's the diagnosis, Doc? Sounds like a case of I've got two things going on on my knee-itis. Two for the price of one. Oh, wow, that's interesting. What we can see there is you've clearly got a scab, and around it you can see the skin's raised, it's quite hard, it's dried out, it's rough. That's a condition called psoriasis. What's happening in psoriasis is the cells in your skin that make the tough outer layer of your skin, it's called keratin, they overgrow for some reason. They're more active, they're making more keratin. That's what making that bit of skin kind of rough and thick and hard. Why won't my psoriasis heal? It's been like that since I was around four or five. Sometimes it goes away over time, 
and sometimes it doesn't. So I'd say for the moment, the best you can do is leave it alone. If it doesn't go away or if it gets worse, then it's well worth going to see a doctor. There are drugs that they could use to treat it, but hopefully it'll, it'll die down of its own accord. Job done for today, clinic closed.